So recently I picked up a GT150 horse and a little 60 horse. With those two engines also came these two controllers. Uh, it's kind of handy when you get a controller when you buy a new outboard because usually you don't. You might have to buy them separately and they're getting harder and harder to come by. At least for a decent price. You now you can buy a controller all day long like this for, you know, $300. But you don't want to do that if you don't have to. So both of these are uh, not really good condition. Um, you notice right off the bat, this little plate isn't on this model. Either it broke off or never had it. Either way, don't know. But I can uh, rob the two for parts, kind of. Um, the 60 didn't have power trim and tilt. So that's why you see the OMC sticker here. You, know, you could install a uh, outer handle that has the switch built into it. But don't need it for the 60 horse. Uh, this one was the GT. It had it, but it broke off. Um, this also has a little warning horn right here, where this one does not. So it's notable, not a big deal. Uh, the biggest problem, we were missing the warm-up lever. Uh, the black back plugs here, but that's not really a big deal either. It looks like what somebody did was they wanted a foot throttle. So they took out the throttle mechanism out of this controller and screwed it down to a plank of wood on that they screwed to the boat. A little, little funky, a little, little weird. Yeah, but whatever, teach his own, I suppose. Um, also, with this controller, see the key? Doesn't return. So basically, you know, you get off, and you got on, and then you got start. But it doesn't go back on its own, which means it's going to keep cranking. I guess it does. Anyway. So that's kind of annoying. It needs an ignition switch. Well, it doesn't need one. It should be replaced. I've had boats or engines in the past where it's done just that. And you know, you think, oh, I don't need to buy one. I'll just, uh, I'll just remember and let it go off. Now you always find yourself leaving in that spot. So I would just replace it. Also, apparently this controller is nearly already apart. So that'll be good. Um, ideally, what you would want, what I would do here is fix up this controller just because it's newer. Problem is. This warm-up lever has these two little detent balls, where this model of controller didn't have those, so that option's kind of out. But this controller actually does kind of you know, look a little better. Uh, this controller's problem is the tachometer plug here, which you can see in this one. They cut off and kind of direct wired into the dash. Apparently they didn't want to buy a $20 harness. No big deal, but that's kind of going to bug me for the rest of my life, so I'm going to get that fixed and use this one for parts. So, stay tuned. So this one's already nearly apart, so let's get that one open first. Kind of see what's going on inside. Pretty easy to do. No, nothing to it. Now again, that one was already taken apart, so that's a little different. Ah, looks like missing some mounting. I want to get this controller out of here, or the cable. That way it's not in my way. The cable's kind of junk anyway. Do that by moving this pin out of the way. And you can get the cable up and out. Throw that off to the side. And now the thing's a little more manageable. Um, we disconnected the uh, warning horn here. I don't know why they would do that. Maybe it was sounding off all the time because their engine was overheating. Who knows? Yeah, that's kind of odd. And I didn't plug them back in that easily. But anyway, we'll do all this later. So, let's get the other one open, see what it looks like. So this controller isn't held in with these uh, brake anchors. So this is going to be a little better demonstration on how to take the controller apart. You have these three large screws here. You uh, would advice don't lose these because they're a weird size that you're not picking up at a hardware store. I think it's like a 15 30 seconds or one inch and 15 30 seconds, some weird long size. So you're either getting them too short to wear in your own grab or too long to wear it pierces through the other side. A little quarter inch difference in the ones that the hardware store sells versus those. Big difference. So. So some advice here. See how I pried that apart with my hand? Don't use the warm-up lever to get you some leverage to pry this apart because you're just going to break the warm-up lever. 
Guess what part's really expensive? This stupid guy. It's like, I don't know, $200 or something. So I don't break the warm-up lever. Getting them used is kind of hard to do because everybody breaks the warm-up lever. So now our controller is looking a little more familiar. Um, I believe this should be sitting inside of there, which as you can see it's not. But I should be able to remedy that halfway decently. Alright, so that's back in order. Our warm-up lever should work. Looks like they cut and spliced this in here. So not really a problem. Looks like they did a decent job of it. So that's kind of handy. Probably just uh, put a new plug on it. If I have one. Or rob it off that the other controller. Either way, no big deal. I think this switch is okay on this one. Anyway, so remove the cables. Pull that pin. Cable can then wiggle up and out. There's one cable that's out. Put the pin back in so you don't lose it. Usually they're nice and greasy just as this one is so it doesn't roll away that easily. So there's our pin for that one. I think this is in here so the moving parts don't touch each other, these two levers. Again, I know, I'm no expert nor my engineer to properly guess what they do, but it makes sense to me. So again, I'll put this pin back in here so I don't lose it. And screw our plastic in back down. Alright. Now i got some zip ties holding the cable to the uh, engine harness, so I'm going to trim those off and get these cables out of the way. So the other uh, controller isn't going to do much for parts. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty screwed up too. So I'm going to uh, install a plug here. We need some uh, purple, some gray wire, and then the black is going to be a ground, so we need to fix the one down there. Uh, ideally, this was never done. Getting in here is going to be really hard. Not something I want to do. So there's our purple. The reason I cut the splice off is because I want to get as much uh, wire as I can. Right. Cut a little more there. Flathead for the ground. And our added in harness can come out of there. So I need some purple, some gray, and some black wire. Um, I think these are 16 gauge. Might be a little hard to see what I'm doing, but I got some wire. I did have a new plug, cool, and I do have terminals. I got plenty of those. By, by a couple hundred, they're pretty cheap. Um, do a lot of electric repairs. A lot of people just cut wires when they uh, don't quite know what they're doing. Say, hey, Brandon, can you uh, fix this? Say, yep, sure can. So, got a wide range crimp tool. Put the wire in. And there's our crimp for our first one. Yeah, I know you couldn't see it. I'll show you the others. That doesn't focus at all, does it? There you go. Here's my three new crimped wires. Not too bad. So, these next little things. That's called a crimp splice. See what it is? That little guy is like 70 cents each, but man does it make a nice splice. You'll, you'll see what it looks like when I'm done. So what the crimpers do is they fold it around inside itself, make a nice good crimp. 
I love them. I think they're the best crimp you can make. Now, granted, it's no uh, butt splice, but I think it's a lot better. Only problem is, it's hard to do. Now, if you had, uh, you know, endless supply of money or something, and you had a uh, hydraulic crimper that would hold these guys like so, and you hit a foot switch in it, you know? Then this would be easy. Well, kind of. You would never get the controller to fit inside a little opening, but it'd be, you know, it would have its purposes, I guess you could say. So basically you need three hands here. One guy to slurp the wire in there. Another one, put it on this side. So you got two hands that need to hold it, and then another guy needs to come across and hit the crimp for you. But looks like this is kind of working. So pretty easy, gray to gray, purple to purple, black to black. Just like downtown, right? So that one's done. Now we gotta get one on the purple. That one's a little tighter down there. And that'll do it. So let me get some heat shrink. So I have my heat shrink tubing on. You don't want to forget about this. I have a uh, Porter Cable um, heat gun with a deflector shield on the end. That is for heat shrink tubing, so you can kind of go in there and heat it up without getting it everywhere. Uh, hose clamp keeps it on because I broke it when I got it. So it's been hose clamped on there its whole life, and it's been working great. I don't know if the deflector shield is going to help on this one. Alright, so purple and gray are fixed. Now we just got to fix the black. Uh, the black mounts under that screw right there. We need a ring terminal for that one. I don't know where the screw went. Back here. So I'll go find a ring terminal that fits that hole. There's my ring terminal. There it went. All right. Now we just gotta kinda put that back in there. So I don't really know how the fact which angle the factory used. The guy that whoever put this in there previously had the retaining ring going out this way. I'm kinda wondering if it goes out this way and kinda loops around. Because it looks a little cramped if I go that way, the way I just had it. I mean things get cramped in here anyway, don't get me wrong, but That looks a little better. That'll do it. All right, now I need to get some uh, plug tools. So this is the factory tachometer harness. It would plug in, you know, down here. So what I'm going to do is use this to line up where each color wire goes. Like purple on this side. This ain't going to be that easy. There's my insertion tool. Just 
See right there? That's where it needs to go. So there's one down. Looks like black's going to go over here on this side. So gray would be on the bottom. Might as well do gray next. Alright, now we got our plug fixed. So that's quite handy. Now we just got to get it in there somehow. And that's the going to be the tricky part. Well, doesn't look like it's going to be tricky at all, actually. Yep, never mind. I don't know what I was looking at there. Zip tie's got to go. So I'm looking at the other plug, see how this went. Looks like this would originally gone on the bottom hole and the tachometer plug next to it. With the flat side up. So that's how it should look. Should fit in there somehow. Like so. Should probably get a uh, new zip tie for the bottom. Get it started and then go grab one. Alright, I got my new zip tie. Good to me. Yep. And the handle straight up and down. This guy goes straight down. Handle straight up. Well, handle can't go straight up and down here. And this is off to the side. So, gonna have to remove this, rotate this down, reinstall. No biggie. Get the handle off. Probably do that first. I do. All right. Get this off. This is your uh, neutral safety cutoff switch. Just rotate that out of the way a little. Can use one of the screws to hold its base in place. Pull that guy out. Five sixteenths, fifteen sixteenths. Gonna pull the handle off. Center screw does that. So what I did there was put in a longer quarter by 20 bolt and I used the bigger hammer, gave it a couple of good whacks and the handle popped right out. Don't, uh, don't expect to have to do that every time, usually these handles wiggle right on out of there. Well, probably has been in its whole life too. Anyway, so there's our handle, pretty basic. Now this thing should slide up. A little locking spring, that's going to be fun to get back in there, but no big deal really. So in theory. These two teeth. 
along with those two teeth. And that little ball detent thing guides along these for, you know, neutral, forward, backwards, whatever it is. So, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. There, perfect. So neutral, forward. Should be reverse. Our handle's a little off, granted. But kind of seems like it's working now. So forward. Second click should be neutral. It's right there, it should be neutral. And it should allow our handle to go straight up and down. Which it does. So let's try this again. Reverse, gas, neutral, click, forward gas. Click back in the forward, line up in the neutral. Alright, so now that's all working properly. Good. Now we have our little, uh, I don't know what it's called, lever. It's called a torsion lever. See this little slot right here? That little rubber head goes into there, and it just kind of rests right there. So as you twist this, it gives a little more tension onto here. But, see now. Now... It was a neutral, I just took it back out. That way I didn't have to fight with this spring-loaded uh, switch. So, now, pretty much got our uh, while you're back in order, we got our plug reinstalled. Our wires don't look dumb. Switch is working, which this one already was to begin with. Um, so yeah, basically we need the cables now. We we'll install these. Those are pretty easy to get in, just the way, I, exact same way I remove them. Getting this two halves back together. That can be a little tricky. You have this little roller, which needs to go into this slot. And if you notice, you can move this back and forth. So depending on where it lies, it's kind of dependent on how easy it is to get it back in there. What we can kind of do is kind of line it up and take a look. You can also move the shifter around a little bit to get everything in there. And then, uh, yeah, I think this also needs to align, but I think that'll do it on its own. Hmm, maybe not. Uh, we'll be okay. Let's line that up. Give it a test. Almost there. Let's 
So I used the warm-up lever there to give myself the other quarter inch it needed. And fit back together nicely. So the only thing I want to make sure of is that no wires are getting pinched there. But now that we aligned all those parts in there, in theory, we shouldn't have to do it again. As long as we don't move anything. Well, looked like it was going right inside the channel and plenty of room up there, so the repair is okay. Wires could have been a little shorter. No big deal. And goes right back together. Go. Cool. We get our longer screws. Now, that's how that handle should come off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire wheel this spline up real quick. That's done. Didn't didn't really look like it did much, but may have. So I'm going to put some of this triple guard grease on these splines because I don't want to have to fight getting this thing back off ever again. Perfect. Now I took it off, it was a neutral, so I'll put it back on in neutral. And that slid in there quite nicely. Grease the splines, couldn't hurt, right? What I was looking at here was this number, 79, the guard. It's $8.99 new and it does actually supposed to have a guard there, so I'm going to rob that off the other controller and we will need a lanyard. Um, looks like one of the uh, push the button in type. They're only 13 bucks, and I think I have one, so that's no big deal there. So we'll get the lanyard, we'll get the guard installed, and uh, we'll see if the thing works. So, that nut is a 7 8 So, that fits fine. You ain't getting a 7 8 on there. So I'm sure they make some kind of special tool for this. I ain't got one. Don't care enough to look. But you can get in there with some needle nose and get that plastic nut off there pretty easily. Yeah, you'll scratch it up a little bit, but yeah, who cares. There's our guard. Wash it up a little bit. Right. Actually, the nut that came off there looks a little bigger than the uh, other controller. I don't know if I'll be able to use that one. Looks a little too big. Maybe that was replaced at some point in its life. Maybe it never had one. Although it has a little hole, so you'd think it would. Perfect. Now I got a parts controller. Throw that over in the corner in case I ever need it. Let's zoom out a little here. And then you can kind of not see the entire controller in one shot, but that, that's basically what it's going to be looking like, obviously. So I'll do a little test. So we got forward and then gas. Everything feels smooth and operating there. Neutral. And we get our click working. And full, full reverse there. Warm up lever, no issues. So, all in all, I say it's a good controller again. So, that's handy. Also, if you notice, I meant to put that on the opposite side. Yeah, 
What are you going to do? Well, that's the end of this video on how I uh, fixed up this controller. Hope you found it helpful. Now, granted, I know that your controller repair needs may be completely different from what I did here, but at least you got a, a decent look at what the inside of them looks like and how to remove the cables. I see a lot of people questioning how to do that. So, I don't know. Maybe this video will uh, help you out, too. So, the uh, way to test this, at least my opinion, is I'm going to hook it up to the motor and make sure it all works. You could get a multimeter and your manual out and sit there and make sure every pin's doing what it's claiming to be doing, or my way, hook it up to the motor. So, well, anyway, I'll put links to the special tools used in the uh, description. So, if you get any questions on what those are, it's down there. So, also follow those links. Those uh, help support my channel here. So, keep that in mind. All right, everybody. Have a good one.